Your childhood was a lot creepier of a place than you think. There's this amazing world kids visit every day after school called Nickelodeon. Where it's edgier than Disney Channel is basically this startup TV network in the 80s and 90s. And it launches with these crazy cartoons like Rocco's Modern Life and Ren and Stimpy, which turns it from a startup to a hit that was actually for a time bigger than Disney Channel. But on the live action side, here comes this man named Dan Schneider, who comes out of nowhere creating shows like Keenan and Cal, Drake and Josh, iCarly, and many more, putting Nickelodeon ahead of the Disney Channel. But behind all the success, it's a creep show. Jeanette McCurdy being photographed at age 15 in a bikini drunk, kids getting yelled at on set horribly with no parents around, and of course feet. A lot of feet. And this is how Nickelodeon was a creep show and Dan Schneider caused it all. And Nickelodeon is the ultimate 90s kid thing because before the 1990s, the brand really didn't exist. Where it launched in the late 1970s, originally being called the Pinwheel Network doing game shows, but eventually rebranded in 1979 as Nickelodeon. And it found success in the 1980s doing reruns of popular kids shows, but cut to 1991, they decided to go original. And when it comes to brands, there's always one that tries to be more wholesome and one that tries to be more edgy. With one example being Nintendo, where in the 80s and 90s, they were seen as the wholesome video game brand. But then there was the company Sega, which came out trying to be more edgy, saying their video games had more blood in it than Nintendo games did. <laughs> There's also examples like Coca-Cola that's famous for doing the Santa Claus ads and being more classical. But then Pepsi took the edgier path early on, hiring race car drivers and jazz artists to advertise for them. And this was Nickelodeon's plan to compete with Disney, where their first cartoon, Doug, was a simple slice of life show. But then the same year did Ren and Stimpy, which was this off the wall show that the Disney Channel would never put on, but Nickelodeon was proud of. And that built a strategy from Nickelodeon of doing the shows that Disney was simply too conservative for. And that brings us to 1993 and a man named Dan Schneider. He was this minor actor known for having a small role on the show Head of the Class on ABC for five seasons. And 1993 ends up getting hired by Nickelodeon to produce, write, and direct a new show for them called All That. Which All That was really a response to the Disney Channel being known for being all white. Where at this point the Mickey Mouse Club was already around for over 40 years. But the show is sort of a running joke where for 14 seasons they had a 90% plus white cast. Anna, Karen, Cubby. And writing wise, they always played it very safe, even for children's programming. So Dan Schneider comes along to Nickelodeon with the show All That and does the opposite, where he does give the world the first kids show with a majority black cast on a children's network. And the show has this humor that's very shock value centered. <laughs> And it ends up knocking the Mickey Mouse Club out, becoming one of the biggest kids shows in the world. And it does lead to spin-off shows like Keenan and Cal and The Amanda Show. And by the late 1990s, Nickelodeon did the impossible beat Disney Channel in the ratings. Dan Schneider is thanked by that for Nickelodeon, where they basically give him the power to do whatever he wants. And that, sadly, was a very, very big mistake. Nickelodeon's logo is the foot because it's supposed to mean unconventional where it was created in 1979, 14 years before Dan Schneider showed up to Nickelodeon. But where the foot started this funny way to break convention, it definitely turned into a freak show. And foot fetishes are a thing where 18% of men do say they like feet. And it does go for women as well, where one in 20 women say they do like feet as well. And people having a fetish for a certain body part is fine, but when that fetish goes into children, it becomes a serious problem. And here's footage of a 15-year-old Ariana Grande putting her big toe in her mouth. Here's Victoria Justice having ketchup poured on her feet. And there's an entire iCarly episode where the focus is Miranda Cosgrove being stuck in a bathtub because her toe is stuck in the faucet. And this isn't some sort of blue moon, once in a season type thing. Where nearly every Dan Schneider show had feet jokes and feet references almost every episode. Come on, work the heel, rub it like a man. And it goes back to his first show, All That. But the issue is it got a lot more common as time went on. And noticeably it happened more and more as Dan Schneider moved away from male-led shows like Drake and Josh and Keenan and Cal. But for shows like iCarly, Victorious, and Sam and Cat, it becomes almost an episode by episode thing where feet are mentioned. And if somebody was just to binge watch the show iCarly, it would be rare to get an episode without a foot joke than to get an episode with one. And iCarly actor Jerry Trainer was the first one to bring this up in the late 2000s, noticing how frequently Dan Schneider would make foot jokes. And Nickelodeon just ignored the complaint thinking it was Dan Schneider's sense of humor. <laughs> But as people began to watch more, it led to more and more questions. 
And Dan Schneider was asked about this, but he went on defense instantly, saying feet were just part of the Nickelodeon brand. And the reason he used feet jokes so often was just because he thought kids thought they were funny. But that creates a big question, and that's why were Dan Schneider's shows the only kids shows to use feet jokes? Ned's Declassified was a popular Nickelodeon show that went for three seasons, no feet jokes. True Jackson VP was another hit and no feet. Both Nickelodeon shows, but neither Dan Schneider had any involvement with. And Disney Channel and Cartoon Network also exist, but neither ever used feet nearly as often for this weird sense of humor. But with Dan Schneider, it's an episode by episode thing to just bring up feet. And things get weirder when you notice that he gradually had teenage girls use their feet more and more in creepier ways on the shows. And he even used his social media with Nickelodeon asking kids to tweet him feet pics. And the worst part is, feet were just half of it. Ariana Grande does the victorious vlogs playing her character of Cat Valentine. And not only does she suck her big toe in various positions, but she also does just about everything else. Things like moaning while lying in bed rubbing a potato, pouring water on herself upside down, and putting her fingers down her mouth. And kids might look at Ariana Grande doing this and laugh, but looking at it at a wider lens, it was clearly a man trying to bring out his fetishes with teenage girls. And where this all gets worse is Dan Schneider clearly forgot he was dealing with kids. Using child stars is this strange thing, where they never actually choose the career path, but their parents always do. And there's these bizarre cases like Jeanette McCurdy, where she's literally told by her mom that if she doesn't work as a child actress, the family goes starving. At the same time, there's also a lot of money to be made for these child stars. Like Miranda Cosgrove, who did make $150,000 an episode on iCarly, where that one show for Nickelodeon off of ads, reruns, and merchandise made them over $100 million. <laughs> But for Dan Schneider, the issue was he never drew a line not realizing he was working with kids and not everything is business. With one example being Raquel Lee, who began working on The Amanda Show in the 1990s. And she described working with Dan Schneider as a battleground between child actors, where Dan Schneider on set would like to hang out with child actors who were ultimately just kids. And Raquel said there was an environment where if they didn't praise him, didn't show him attention, he wouldn't write them into future episodes. And it created this power dynamic on set where kids would treat Dan Schneider like the ruler. And that was just a small piece of the Amanda Show's issues, where Amanda Bynes herself did deal with extremely rough home life conditions behind closed doors. And Dan Schneider began having her over his house all the time when she was just a teenager. And while she was trying to get emancipated from her parents, Dan Schneider actually offered her to let her live with him. But Dan Schneider's wife, for some obvious reasons, never let it happen. But this just shows how much Dan Schneider intervened with child actors' life so much it went past work boundaries where he ends up wanting a teenage girl to live with him, a teenager who should be mentioned he filmed scenes with him and her in a hot tub together. And this goes past The Amanda Show into Zoe 101, with Kristen Herrera, who was in the main cast the first season. But she was fired at age 14 for the second season because Dan Schneider felt she just looked too old. And then there was another main cast member, Alexa Nicholas, who didn't make it past the second season. And that's because casting middle to high school age kids, there will be some drama to happen. And the actresses Alexa Nicholas and Jamie Lynn Spears just didn't get along. So Dan Schneider and Britney Spears, when Alexa was just 13 years old, show up at her trailer and yell at her when her parents aren't around. And Alexa described this as an hour where she has two adults yelling at her when she's just 13. And she ends up quitting the series over this, forfeiting her contract, even though she was allowed to come back for a third season. Possibly the worst case of them all was Jeanette McCurdy, where Jeanette McCurdy has this awful home life where her mom is living vicariously through her. And she does get cast in iCarly, but she gets some of the worst treatment imaginable. Where in her tell-all book, she doesn't directly name Dan Schneider, but does mention a Nickelodeon producer called The Creator, and said he did things like get her drunk when she was just 15 years old, did things like insist on her giving him massages when they were done shooting, and he had her pose and reveal in bikinis while he knew she had an eating disorder. And then Jeanette McCurdy mentioned that favoritism was also a thing. When Ariana Grande gets asked to sing for the VMA, she gets to skip filming Sam and Cat, where they put her character into a box and she gets to be free from filming. But on two occasions, Jeanette McCurdy wanted a day off so she can go audition for a movie. And Dan Schneider on the spot begins yelling at her, threatening to ruin her career and fire her. And Jeanette McCurdy was one of the first people to bring Dan Schneider to life doing these more public freakouts against him. And be it Amanda Bynes, Alexa Nicholas, or Jeanette McCurdy, there is a trend with Dan Schneider, which is finding these highly vulnerable teenage girls get heavily involved in their life and then have a lot of power over them. Take $100 off her check. And this is definitely the creepiest stuff, but it's only just part of the nightmare where not every Nickelodeon show had all these complaints coming from child actors. With one example being Nas Declassified, which was a Nickelodeon show not produced by Dan Schneider, and 15 years later, there is a sense of immense love between the cast and crew. Some liking of Christian, there was liking of Lindsay, yeah. some liking of Carly, yeah. Carly liking Christian, like we were kids yeah. working together all the time. Yes, I liked Christian, okay. With Dan Schneider in every show he did, there's these intense stories of yelling, 
Dan Schneider preferring child actors to be away from their parents as much as possible on set. And Dan Schneider saying that he felt parents did interfere because he wanted to yell at child actors to make them more mature. So there's things like Jeanette McCurdy, which is Dan Schneider as absolute worst. But then even on his best, which is just a regular day at work, he does clearly treat child actors as a commodity for money. And probably the biggest question at this point for a lot of people is, could Dan Schneider ever go to jail? And the simple answer is, right now, no. Dan Schneider did clearly sexualize teenagers on his shows, but there is no regulation on using fee and there was technically no law violated. And while it wasn't the right thing to do, Dan Schneider was in legal rights to yell at kids working on set. And Dan Schneider does have these creepy accusations, but minus some from Jeanette McCurdy that probably already passed the statute of limitations, there is nothing worthy of throwing him in jail. And Dan Schneider has been fired from Nickelodeon for five years now, and while he is trying to make a recovery, his career is clearly damaged. So Dan Schneider's story is likely not going to end up behind bars, but he will be someone seen as creepy in Hollywood who did a lot of bad things and now lives in Hollywood exile. And going forward, there is a lesson to this, and that's that working with child actors is a gray zone and people need to be careful going forward. And Dan Schneider was clearly one of those people. And looking at his shows in retrospect, it's hard to tell what is a joke and what was a fetish. And that's something for the history of Nickelodeon people should always remember. But with that, I'm Charles Perlow. Subscribe if you learned something.